Ready? Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, I forgot it's on. The oh. thing's paused up top. So I'm pa or turn off, turn so off the thing. And I know. I'm Hello. Hello. So today we are starting our shower. It's a big day, and he has to drill another hole in the van. It's been a while since you've had to drill a hole in the van. Yeah, this is gonna be kind of a big one. So it's gonna be yeah. like two inches wide just for our drain stuff, for our gray water. So it'll be fun. Wish us luck. Let's go, baby. Woo! Oh, hey! <laughs> give the people at home some kisses. Alright, what you got there? I got Bailey. What else you got there? A little stinker. And what else? Oh, kisses too, thank you. A little lower? Oh, yeah. So, we got our shower pan. It is 32 by 24 inches long. In our previous videos, we did cut out a light hole here. And we did frame and install our little bump out for our shower and all of our good shampoos and stuff. Nice moisturizers. Um, but yeah, so we're looking at where to install our shower pan. It'll go against the wall. Do you like the shower pan? Are you gonna sleep in there? I'm gonna go in oh, the shower. Oh, she's totally gonna sleep in there. Well, that's good. Hey, look, it's mini cell. Hey, nice. You made it far oh, down look, there. Yeah, mini cell and XPS. Nice. Sweet thing. Oh, there's a big Whoa. Room. How low can you Ow! <laughs> can you go? Okay, baby. Let's go. Ready? Oh, dear. <laughs> Where's my hole? Did it knock all the way through? I don't see it. Hopefully to end up in this freaking bar. So what happened here? So the hole went through. Okay. Well, we're gonna make a different one. So our our other oh, hole dear. ended up going like in the hollow part of one of the pillars that runs kind of like east to west. So we were pretty close, but. If we just ship this about three inches, we'll clear that. And we'll also, on the far side, clear these dang blobs. Those darn blobs. Those darn little stinker blobs. Stinker blobs. So, we're gonna give that a go. Now we got eyeballs. Or nope. airbags. <laughs> <laughs> What's no? Did we clear? Uh, oh yeah, for sure. Okay, that's it for time. Okay. Okay, so here's what I've been up to. I got the circular saw out, and I know our pan has a bunch of rounded edges, but I'm just going to make most of these straight, and then I'm going to follow it up with the uh, jigsaw. But I did trace it out. I got a straight edge, my square, to make sure everything's square with the wall at least. Um, but luckily, just based on the depth of our pan and our subfloor, we'll only need to cut up to this line. So this is what'll sit underneath our subfloor. And um, basically from the outside edge here to that lip is one and a half inches. So luckily, with our circular saw, um, the shoe of it on this left side is exactly one and a half inches. So I'm just using that to either follow the wall or the plywood. I'll have to figure out how to do this side. All right, so that definitely took a lot longer than expected, but we got the piece of plywood out. I had to use the good old persuader. But, uh, but yeah, while we're down here, you can actually see how well some of the adhesives stuck. So here is, I think this ended up being Loctite a Power Grab. So that held the foam and the mini cell so well that it actually ripped the mini cell. Here's some, I guess these didn't bond as well, but you could see some of the instances where there is good adhesion. So yeah, it's kind of a mix. Either the mini cell rips or the foam board rips. I don't really know what that is. Uh, and then of course the PL300 for our 
foam board to plywood worked pretty strongly too. Now that we're all clean, we get to deal with the corners. So I did find this, well it was a spool of wire uh, from our wiring video, uh, but this kind of radius and diameter matches what we're getting on the pan. So my plan is to kind of use this as a template. I'll basically mark my sides um, and then that should give us a nice even radius all around. So then we'll get to see if this fits perfectly. Okay, got our corners cut out. We'll give this a quick test fit. Hopefully everything fits well. Oh yeah, look at that. Fits like a glove. Uh, so I am all the way against the wall. I don't know how well you could see that, but that uh, pilot hole that I drilled out the other day is pretty much in center with that. Um, there's very little play left and right, which is good. Let's see, up and down. Okay, yeah, that's expected. So there is some play again from against the wall, but uh, in the end, all of these little tile flanges will get screwed down to some sort of supports. So now I'm going to build a little frame step for it. So we reduce the curb a little bit, but there's still a little curb, so we got to build a nice little supporting structure for it. Yep. So. All right, let's do it. Do we even need a shower pan if Bailey's just going to give us a bath? <laughs> You're right. We'll just do Bailey showers every day. Hmm. Or Tinku Bailey. Tinku. Tinku, 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 Tinku. You want to stay where the shower pan is going to go. So I made this little contraption as the support for our step or the curb that goes into the shower pan. And so since our screws weren't long enough, I just kind of like drilled out a little bigger hole so that these could drop in and reach the subfloor. Nice. So we're going to get this installed. I already previously marked out exactly where I want it. You can kind of see this little corner that's got to match up. Let's get this bad boy in there. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to make sure everything's square with the floor. That's where this guy comes into play. Just putting it on the ground. Making sure the top is touching. Snazzy tool you got there. Yeah, it's our new toy. It's the Craig Rip Cut. So you can cut up to 24 inches with it. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it should help us make reproducible cuts instead of trying to line up a straight edge with the marking. So. Nice. Let's we'll see how it goes. Okay, you your safety goggles? Mm-hmm. Hey! Yeah. Ooh, that was juicy. Take off probably about a half inch from the top and then everything should sit against the wall nice and snug. Very nice. Beautiful. Got it. Look, juicy. Big juice. <laughs> Just chilling. It's a good day to chill in the van in the sun. All right, little afternoon shenanigans. So I've been working on getting this curve on this piece of three quarter inch for our shower walls. And I'm dealing with the angle on the roof or the ceiling and then the angle of the wall. Uh, so I did just rip this down. Luckily, this is kind of a flat plane here. So I just had to cut a slight angle in it. Um, what I did for that is I basically just taped a string straight up from the ground all the way to the ceiling and then used this little square here to make sure that everything's square to the floor. Um, and then from there I could use my tape measure just to follow that string to see what the final distance from the floor to wherever this ended up on the ceiling would be. Um, so now there's this slight angle there, that's how I measured it. And for this side, I don't know what I just did with it, but I basically just had this little piece of wood um, and I 
chopped a little hole in it. And I basically just drag this against the wall with a pencil on that little divot to trace the curvature of the wall. So it's kind of going to be the average of this, you know, flat plane because it's not like point. But uh, I think it should be close enough for our purposes. So I'm going to get this on the jigsaw and cut off this curved line that I've traced. What's the status update? So I'm getting our wall up. I just got this piece fitted in. It fits pretty well against the corner, or I guess the, yeah, I guess the corner of the van. Over here and along the wall and up on the ceiling. So I just gotta rip this down to length and then we should have a complete left and right wall. We did cut the foam blob just to fit our uh, wall here. Uh, so I did kind of patch it up. I also just added a piece of three quarter inch plywood behind it. I did have to sand it a little bit just to make sure it's all flush. Then I went over it with our wood filler just to make everything nice and smooth. So I'll give that a sand in a little second. Uh, but once that's sanded, uh, we are gonna install this wall. Uh, so it is gonna be freestanding, so we're not gonna have framing here, uh, but it is a big three quarter inch piece of plywood. So it should fit nicely here. I'm not sure if we're making a mistake by not framing it. However, we didn't wanna have to cut further into the blob. So we're gonna see how that goes. Um, and so since there's no framing, that means that we're going to be relying on pocket holes to hold everything in. So I did just pocket hole it, um, the wall piece, kind of everywhere. So it's either like four or three or six inch intervals, depending on which side it was on. Uh, but it is a little hardcore looking just because there's not framing and we want to make sure it doesn't fall over. So hopefully this isn't a mistake but I'm gonna bring this into the van and we're gonna get that installed. So the next thing that we're working on is getting our toilet situated. So we are going with the Cuddy. Uh, we found that it's kind of like the best dimensions. It's small, um, it's the urine diverting one, so you don't have a stinky mix of liquids and uh, solids. Uh, so it is one of those composting toilets, which it's not exactly composting material that is the result of it. But we liked it, um, and so our plan is to have a slider come out. So we did see, uh, was it Explorer, or sorry, Tim and Katie, they had a nice video where they had a little cutout in this area, and the toilet was on sliders. So that's our plan. I was basically doing a little bit of napkin math, just to make sure that all of my measurements are right. But basically, we're going to be cutting out this hole, which is about 18 and a quarter, uh, square in this wall. So I want to make sure that everything's nice and centered and then that's where we will install our access door which will have a gasket. I'm going to get some tape just mark it out and then I'll probably just go at it with maybe a jigsaw and the circular saw um, and then we should have a nice little hatch. Focus! There. If my calculations are correct by the time we install that access panel, the flange on the access panel should butt up right next to our shower pan flange, which is this guy, the tile flange. So let's do it. Got it installed. So the framing, I use these two by four studs. Uh, I did chop off just a little bit from it just to make it uh, flush with the bottom, but this is going to give us a nice structure to build those heavy duty sliders with the toilet sliding on top of it. So got it all framed out. Now we finally get to start plumbing. So I think my first step is just to drill out this hole, make sure I can get the fittings in. I'm not really sure what the ideal hole is. Uh, on our pan, it's two inches, so I'm just gonna start with two inches, and then if I need to go bigger, I'll just nest my two inch inside of a, say, two and a quarter or whatever. All right, so the hole is drilled out. I ended up stepping up to a two and a quarter hole saw, and what that does is it allows us to fit our fittings uh, underneath there. So this is part of the Hepvo valve, and what that is, is it's a waterless P-trap. So in general, P-traps basically just make sure that the smelly air from your 
sewer or in our case our gray water can't come up. At this point I've primed the cutout so we just want to prevent rust so uh, we'll get the drain installed. For that we will need this uh, plumber's putty. So let's get this drain installed. So we basically just need to create a little snake of this and roll it around the rim of the drain. And then yeah, everything's wiped off already. But now we can just place it into our hole and get this screwed in from the underside. All right, now we can just pull this stuff off. And there you have it. I'm working on the drawer that our toilet's gonna sit on. Uh, so this bottom piece is the dimensions of the toilet plus about a quarter inch. So I accidentally made it, oopsie, don't look at this stuff. And made the entire dimensions of this, the dimensions of the toilet bottom. So I had to remake it. So basically all these pocket holes will be flipped upside down so you won't see them. We might be able to see these, but it, there's only four of them that'll be visible. And the way it'll work is that all of these little side pieces will just cover the edge of the bottom so that our only exposed edges that we should be able to see, I guess, are the tops as well as on the long ones here. So I went this route just so that uh, when we do have the toilet sticking out or sl slid out, we can kind of not see the edge of the wood like this. So I'm going to put this together and yeah, hopefully it all works out. Okay, finally got the drawer slide in and the drawer, big shake. So I did have to change the way that I built this framing piece. So that way I still have access there. Um, and because of that, I had to kind of work out the physics of how this is going to work. So since our toilet will be sitting on there and it's kind of hovering, right, there's kind of a cantilever going on. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I built nice, strong supports here. So all the weight that's going there is going to put equal force over here, going upwards. So I think I got that pretty solid now. There's six screws going down into our uh, subfloor. And then, yeah, the door or the drawer slides pretty nicely. Um, but yeah, there's still a few more cleanup things that I need to do. Uh, so I did have to modify this edge here because this kind of protruded a little too far out. So I did take off maybe like a half a, I don't know, a quarter inch from this little framing piece. So I'll need to figure out how to put this gasket back on. Um, and then, yeah, after that, I need to figure out these, but I'm probably just gonna figure that out later. I'll use some sort of wing nut uh, just so I can use my fingers instead of getting a flat head in there. So we're looking good. We're gonna call that complete for now. Good job, Bailey. What are you doing right here? So the next thing that we're gonna look at is this toilet paper dispenser or holder. Uh, it's the Ocean Air Dry Roll. I guess Dometic makes it too. So it's pretty sweet. Um, it's all waterproof, uh, which is great because obviously this is gonna be in our shower. Um, but one of the cool things about it is that when you close the lid, you could see that the spindle in the middle that holds the toilet paper actually sucks the toilet paper back up. And then same thing when you go and open it, it rolls it out a little bit. So that's a nice quality of life feature there. So just looking over the instructions, it looks relatively simple. Uh, basically we'll have to cut out this template. So we'll cut on these scissor marks here, these dashed lines, and the same thing in the dashed lines on the inside. That'll give us basically this frame. And so we'll tape that up on the wall where we want it. And then we'll probably drill out a couple holes, say like around here, so that we can fit our jigsaw blade through there. So let's get to it. The template is cut out and taped where we want it to be. I used a level basically against the ground or the floor, zeroed it out, and then brought it up to here and then used these little crosshairs here to reference for 
level. So uh, we basically are just going to center it with our niche. It clears the door. And one thing that's been super helpful is that uh, before we covered up all of our walls, we took a picture with a um, tape measure rolled out. So that way we can kind of understand how far away some things are and where we need to avoid. So basically we're going to be right in this area here. Ta-da! Dusty. Okay, let's see how it turned out. Not bad, we'll take it. Let's just do a quick test fit. Hey, like that. Bingo. Okay, that went pretty smoothly. Pretty stoked about it. But it's kind of fun. I'm glad that our measurements worked out. So the next steps are to apply a bead of caulking around the flange here, then seat it into the hole and screw it in. But since we still have to do our tiling and all that waterproofing, uh, I think for now I'm just going to screw it in and then when it comes time to like red guard and tile our shower, I'll just take it off. We'll do all the layers and then I'll screw it back in. All right, we have an update. The shower pan is going in. So if you take a peek over here. Bring you around town. You take a look at some of the stuff that I added here. I did add these half inch um, pieces of plywood just to give this some supports up here. Nice. And then I also tried to fill this little gap that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, like a little low spot. So I basically stuck some mini cell there and then just tried to use a razor blade to cut it flush with the rest of it. Nice. So let's get this in. All right, let's do it. So it should be a pretty snug fit and that's expected. Look at that, I almost oh, clicked it. I know, I feel <laughs> like it like snapped into place. It snapped into place <laughs> with this uh, lip here. Oh, Bailey. Oh, Bailey. Hey, you can't just run away, Bailey. Jump out the van and run away. We're gonna have to put a little gate over here or something. So yeah, so you can see with the tub in, here's the tolerance that I oh Bailey. And with Bailey in the tub, here's the tolerance that I had with this panel. So good stuff. Looks good. She's like, oh it's just my new bathroom. You like your bean? All right, so if we didn't mention it, this is the Lippert 24 by 32 shower pan. And now that it's seated, we gotta follow some instruction uh, steps. So what we're gonna do first is get this screwed in. So this little lip here is the tile flange. Um, that's just like a known word, I guess. And each pan manufacturer will have different installation steps. So yours might not even have a flange at all. But basically the flange is there so that when you put tile on your wall or some sort of vinyl, planks, whatnot, um, you'll overlap your tile with this and then stay about a quarter inch from the bottom where you will uh, end up putting some silicone around it. So uh, right now what we gotta do is screw these in. So for this pan, they say to use a flat back screw and then you wanna stay uh, three inches from the corners, minimum, as well as only two screws per side. So I'm probably just going to go four inches from each corner and then we're going to call it good there. I got the screws in. As you can see I tried to stay probably about a half inch from the bottom um, and again that's so that our tile could overlap it. So uh, our next steps are to cover all of these seams with flashing tape. So this is basically just to help waterproof these areas. Red guard or something like that painted over it wouldn't necessarily create a perfect seal. So the flashing tape that we're using is this 3M. I've never used it before, but after doing some research, uh, it is very tacky and sticky. 
so we shouldn't have any risks of it kind of coming off of this. So every single seam everywhere, even this one that I covered before, is going to be covered with that flashing tape. So I'll cover stuff like this, all the wood joinery, and then this gap here all along the tile or the tub flange. Then I'll also be covering this section up. So this is where our big cable is. So we are going to have a piece of trim here. So my plan is to just try to keep this short of however far the trim goes. So it'll probably be about an inch from the wall. And that way uh, there is tape there, but it'll be covered by a nice trim piece. So let's get to it. to cutting it, which ends up cutting some of the brown paper. If you just slide it, it just goes right down the split. Huh. Science. Good to know. This stuff's pretty sweet. Nice. The flashing tape is up and I got all of this area covered. So now we're gonna move on to Red Guard. So Red Guard is basically just a paint on waterproof membrane. So uh, basically for all of the cracks we had to cover it and now with this we'll be able to apply it over everything. So I've taped off what I do and don't want paint to get onto and we're going to get right onto it. So I'm going to show Liana how it's done <laughs> and then she's going to take over. She's sunburnt from being in the sun all day. Jigu jigu. All right, so the way this goes on is just like paint. Put a thick layer on, you could frame it out with the brush first and then go in with the roller, whatever floats your boat. So I'm gonna start with this little baby roller we got. And so it goes on pink and then when it dries, it'll be red. Ooh, yum yum. Raspberry pudding. Yum. Don't get it on the ceiling. <laughs> I think I'm all about precision. Oh, almost got it on the ceiling. Wow, looks all red. Yeah, red guarded. Nice. But yeah, watch how fun this is. <gasps> I did that the other time. <laughs> Don't Dude! Look. It comes out. Oh. Are you the Red Guard police? Yes. Gee, what is it? One roll. Don't get on the ceiling. Hello. Good morning. So we have our shower all waterproofed, nice and bright red. And it's actually pretty funny. We've seen a lot of people that go um, on walks through here and I've seen people walking by and they just like triple take looking at that like what the heck is going on in that van. It's an aesthetic. Yeah. We love the red color. Yeah, so nice. We might actually keep it. No, we're not. We're not going to keep it. But <laughs> so today we actually picked up some vinyl, well, I guess usually it's vinyl flooring, but some waterproof vinyl that we're going to be using on the shower walls. Uh, we thought we were going to go with a really like white marble, but we ended up going with more of a champagne um, color. You can't really see it. We'll show it later. Oh. But yeah, so excited to have this on and kind of hide the red so yeah Aaron's gonna be working on that today yeah so let's get right into it oh look <laughs> Our little bobcat. This is our vinyl. It's waterproof, all that good stuff. We're gonna use that same vinyl adhesive to adhere it to our red guard. So that should work pretty good. Then once that's all stuck up and nice and situated, we're gonna go at it with this silicone. So there were some helpful folks at the floor and decor store. <laughs> <laughs> floor and decor store, floor and decor store, floor and decor store. Yeah, there you go. 
Florin Decor Store, who helped us uh, kind of color match these silicones that'll go in between the tiles with the actual vinyl that we got. So uh, we ended up getting this Frosty, which is pretty much the same color as this, but I think it ended up kind of just being preference as to, you know, if you wanted this a little lighter or darker, they pretty much had every shade in between. So we went with Frosty. Here's the vinyl that we ended up getting. Uh, and as you can see, there's kind of just small little textures in there, nothing too major. And that's what we liked about it, kept it a little more neutral. So these kind of have like a locking system. It's gonna be kind of hard to see because I didn't really compare this well for you guys, but uh, one side's got like kind of this groove and then the adjacent piece kind of just slides into it and then sits down. So something like that. So we're gonna get this onto here. Some of the challenges that we're gonna have is that there's a lot of uneven surfaces, right? Like the flange for our hatch door, we have to deal with some of the curves around this guy, the toilet holder, and then of course the weird 90 degree angles for our little shower niche. So uh, my plan is to start at the bottom. I'm gonna have to cut a bunch of little pieces uh, for this edge. And then as far as cutting these, I think all you really need is, you know, probably a straight edge and then a little uh, utility blade uh, so you can score it and then just snap it wherever your score is, it'll break off. Status update. So it looks really good. We're actually really happy with it. So we still got another hour, so I'll keep working, but it's definitely been going a lot faster now that I've kind of pretended that this area doesn't exist. So I will have to obviously go back up through here and cover that up, but it's looking really nice. All right, all of the tile pieces are in now. This morning when I came out here, I had noticed that the pieces on this door had slid down, so I had to kind of fix those, as well as some other places that had kind of just like slipped out of their uh, normal location. But we're in. It's nice seeing that everything's covered, less red, and we had pretty much the perfect amount of tiles. We ended up buying 60 square feet, so we bought three boxes. Each came with 20 square feet, and uh, from our calculations, we had um, 49 square feet of space that we needed to cover with the tiles. So uh, we got plenty of extras left, as well as whatever spares that I had. Some of the stuff that we'll have to do later with the tiles is for the face frame. So we're gonna build a little face frame here, and I'll give it some more support. Uh, from rocking as well as cover up the Nautilus door once that comes in so that way we don't have the canister visible it'll kind of be tucked behind the door so for now I'm gonna let this dry Ta -da. and there's a little cap of doodle doos it's a runner my hands are all silicone-y. Good luck ever getting this out. We don't need to do anything else back there, right? Better not. Okay. And there's our toilet paper holder. Look at that. So Leon is putting the silicone frosty. Wait, it's just like frosting. Oh, shower I hate wall. frosting too. <laughs> I like to eat it. I don't like to decorate with it. Well, you can eat this afterwards. No. So I she's don't. going at it with the caulking gun and a little bit of frustration. She's having a lot of fun. She says she likes it more than staining. No, I will take staining over this. It's looking pretty good. We might go over it with a rag just to get any of that like extra layer of sheen off. Like you could see kind of the silicone bits. All right, well, good job. Good job well done. Yep. She had so much fun doing it. So fun. All right, it's been a few days and our adhesive for our vinyl tiles are all dried. Same thing with all of the silicone in between all the seams. So the next thing that we're going to be working on is getting all of the fittings plumbed in. So. We're gonna install a shower head up here 
and then somewhere down here we're going to be installing the valve so that'll you know obviously change the temperature and turn on and off the shower yes that's what it's called so we did order our stuff so we got uh, we went with brushed nickel uh, we thought it kind of looked nice that's definitely one of the things that you have to consider too is because these little metal accents and stuff kind of will make its way through your vehicle so in this case since we are doing the brushed nickel shower head uh, we're probably going to get brushed nickel drawer handles and then a brushed nickel sink on the side when we install that so we just want that all to match but it was a pretty tough decision just to figure out what exactly we wanted so we're going to get these installed as far as the valve goes according to my quick google search uh, the average is probably around 40 to 50 inches above your floor so in our case 40 to 50 inches ends up somewhere in this area and I'm just gonna install it kind of in the center of this tile just so that I'm not breaking up one of these connection points up here like the seams so the mixing valve will get installed and then um, the shower head or this little wand thingamajig we're going to install obviously somewhere up here right you don't want to be crouched over trying to take a shower that doesn't really make sense so I think my plan is to install this uh, it's pretty simple I think they actually say that you need a two inch hole saw for this but from my testing we can get away with one and three quarters so a smaller hole means less material sawdust potential for leaking all that good stuff so we're gonna do that and then as far as the shower wand we're gonna install it pretty much as high as it can go and in line with the faucet so Obviously, there's some amount of articulation that can go on with this thing. So at the top point, we'll probably want it to be about an inch away from the ceiling. And then we can kind of tilt it down. So this isn't as crucial for us because we're relatively short. But if you're like six whatever, um, you can try to optimize exactly how high this goes by uh, saying, you know, what angle you want your water and then kind of the max thing. So at that point you would never be able to go backwards because you're hitting the ceiling. But not a problem for us because we're cute and petite. All right, some decisions have been made and we decided to center our faucet first. So that length here with this orange tape is about 22 and a half inches. Then uh, from the bottom, 48 ended up being like somewhere up here uh, but just so that it's center with this tile I did just make it 46 so again that's one of those preference things and then we're gonna take that same distance straight up and install the shower head so that's I mean there's probably only a distance of like or a difference of about one inch between the two so up here I think it came out to 20 and a half inches down here is 22 and a half. So if we were to install them both center, our valve would be here and then kind of like on this side to the left. So I think it'll be okay just to keep it center with this. So in that case, 11 and a half or whatever, 11 and a quarter from our left edge in. We're gonna take that straight up. So 11 and a quarter in from here will be perfect. Um, because, you know, by the time we add our Nautilus door, we'll kind of shift everything. All right, hopefully you guys don't fall, but we're gonna do this. Kind of nervous about it because we worked really hard to finish these surfaces. But again, safety squints, pilot hole, hole saw. Nerving, or what's the word, nerving? Nervous? Mm. 
We've got some melted red guard on our bit. See, I think that the piece of vinyl tile is in here, kind of stopping it from going. So I'm going to take that out. I see you. All right. Well, that went pretty smooth. We can just take off this tape now. So, let's see, where did our valve go? So our valve should fit through here. Nice. And then we can put, it, just for the sake of looking at it, we can just put the plate over it. Something like that. There we go. So I'm happy with that cut out. One of these is the hot side and cold side. I think it's probably cold, hot, I don't know. And then your output mixed water comes out the top. It'll go up and then obviously your shower head. Let's do the next part. Okay, just kidding. We can't install the shower head just yet because we're missing some fittings as well as the shower arm. For now, I think what I'm gonna do is get some of this PEX installed on the walls. So if you saw our, uh, what was it, subfloor video, we did run uh, these hot and cold lines underneath our subfloor. Cold water runs into the heater, which is under here. Then uh, that gives us both hot and cold supplies. It'll tee off from here, so one side will go towards our galley sink, towards me. Then the other side will kind of climb up through here, up through this little hole, which I'm hopefully thinking is large enough. And then we can route it to our mixer valve, which obviously the output mixed water comes up to whatever shower head fitting we have here. Here is our PEX tubing. So this is what we're going to use to run all of our hot and cold lines. And they're obviously color coded. We ended up buying 100 feet of each because that's that, all that was in stock. So we definitely have way more than we need. But we'll have extras we can use it around the house or something. But yeah, I wanted to talk about PEX B versus PEX A. So there's two, I think there might actually be a Pe PEX C, but I don't know what that's about. So. Uh, we went with PEX B. PEX B is the crimp or the clamp type. So basically there's little rings that you put around the end, you stick your fitting in, and then you crimp or clamp your ring around it so that it holds it nice and snug. Uh, PEX A is the compression type, so you don't have those rings, but you do need a special tool that basically expands the inside diameter enough to fit a fitting for it. So uh, we didn't want to buy that special tool. It costs like a hundred or maybe two hundred dollars for it. Uh, we just didn't think that was worth it, especially because we're not doing this every day. So we went with PEX B. The downside with PEX B though is that uh, you do have a little bit of flow restriction because you are fitting a fitting inside of this inside diameter. So in our case it's a half inch Whereas with PEX A, you kind of stretch this out and then you fit a full size half inch fitting into there and it naturally kind of just closes with itself. So PEX A and PEX B are not compatible or their fittings aren't compatible with each other. So make sure you consider what you're buying before you buy it. Oh, look who's out here. Oh, Bailey, you want to learn about the PEX? She's like, <laughs> I do want a PEX. She's like, you want a PEX? She's like, no, I, I want some. Pecs. She's like, I want some pets. <laughs> it's a new day and we got all the good stuff in so here's what we had to order so the first thing we had to order was this elbow fitting so it is I think the it's called like a winged elbow or something along those lines if you look up shower fitting you'll probably find this but basically our mixed pex mixed water from our pex comes up through here obviously and then it has these wings where you can mount it to some sort of support. Then after that you have the threaded half inch which is pretty typical for all the shower stuff and then here is what we got. So we're replacing the articulating piece from our shower so instead of using this guy 
we're just going to use this guy. It's got a nice look to it. It's square and matches our mixer valve. And basically, we got this one. It's pretty sweet because this thing rotates. So there is a version that doesn't rotate. Uh, so that might work for you if you're a given height. Uh, but for the adjustability sake, we got one with this little adjustable piece here. So from this winged fitting, it goes into here. Then the water comes out the bottom, which is where our uh, little shower hose will be. That goes down, loops around, goes into the shower uh, head. And then that shower head obviously sits in this little area. Since we're going to try to avoid using like a little nipple or extension and just connect this fitting directly to here, I might have to kind of like cut a hole large enough to fit this fitting through our wall so that uh, this could sit flush with it. And then what also came with this guy is just like a square flange as well. So, so yeah, I think that's my next step. So I think I'm basically just gonna cut a hole this diameter. So this is half inch NPT. So I'll probably cut maybe like a three quarter to one inch hole and go from there. So I got that hole drilled out for our shower arm. And when I test fit it, it worked. You know, it fit obviously, but the uh, fitting was pretty much touching the wall. So what I ended up doing was, and you can kind of see it slightly like this. I ended up cutting out a square with a multi-tool and just a razor blade that would fit the, I guess, perimeter of our shower arm through there. And that basically was through the tile, which gave us another, say, an eighth to a quarter inch of space. So now when this is all seated to the back, there's plenty of room to fit our pecs and of course the clamp ring that goes around it. But instead of creating a support behind the fitting and this fitting, I'm planning just to create a shim in between the wall and the fitting and screw it this way. So that way we're not dealing with basically a piece of plywood going all the way through here because we do want to end up covering this wall eventually. So that would prevent us from having to create, you know, a little section here, go around the support here, another section here, and then going around whatever's supporting this. We could probably even throw in a little access door cut out in the wood so that if we ever needed to we could access these guys. I don't know how necessary that is but I guess it's kind of important to think about you know how easy it is to repair something if something were to go wrong. So we are fully expecting things to go wrong and at this point there's definitely things that if it did go wrong we would have a very hard time to figure out. So from this point forward we are trying to make it easily repairable. It is another bright and sunny day here in beautiful Southern California. We we're actually getting some 80 degree weather, which it seems to have come a little bit late since it's midway into summer now, I guess. I don't know. So since it's so hot in here, I opened our T vent window. So it's hard to measure the impact that this little opening is having as far as airflow goes. However, I am certain that it is non-zero. So, we're making it work. I could just open the door too, but uh, it is what it is. So I'm getting this piece installed onto that winged little arm or the elbow. It seems to have worked so far. So I basically glued two pieces of half inch plywood together. So now we have one inch nominal thickness. I hole sawed the center and then just cut out a little groove so that we could fit this around this. So I am going to need to adjust the rotation just a little bit. There are two little set screws where you could loosen those up and then adjust the rotation of this one. It's fully tightened so that way when this is fully tightened you have the right orientation for your uh, pecs. So in this case, we want it pointing straight down. Then for this guy, 
I'm probably going to do a similar thing, except it's not going to be a complete square like this. So my plan is just to build basically a one inch standoff in between the wall and this plate where we can just screw into here. I just threw three rounds of Teflon tape on our fitting. Let's get this installed. So when you install this, you want to not back out. So when you're coming up close to its final position, you don't want to go past it and then have to rotate backwards because that's going to potentially cause another uh, weakness or a place where it can leak. All right, we got it lined up. Had to do a little bit of coercion, but, uh, but yeah, I got it more or less lined up straight up and down. All my holes line up and this thing is super tight. So I'm just gonna drive some screws through here. Uh, my plan is to go through here and then basically just touching the wall a little bit. Uh, at this point, this is tightened down a lot. Uh, so the only reason to throw some screws into here is so that it could stop it from rotating out. All right, and there is our shower head. So that's installed. Next, we'll work on getting this installed. Okay, here's what we're up to. So I got our fittings laid up here. This is our mixer valve, and then just for reference, downwards here, this fitting is the mixed water. So the combination of the cold and the hot side that will come out of the shower head. So we're using these locking clips. They got little nubs to grip onto to connect our pecs to the fittings. Then from these uh, NPT to pecs fittings, we're gonna use these pecs to pecs elbows. So we decided to go this route. Well, we kind of have to go this route because we only have a one and a half inch space in the wall to work with. And that's a result of these two by two supports on left and right. So that's the complete thickness of our wall. If these were elbows with a threaded side, we wouldn't be able to unscrew it and service this mixer valve if we ever needed to. Wherever there's threads, I'm gonna throw in this Teflon tape or PTFE tape, and then we'll sh we should be able to screw everything in and uh, at least get this set up and just basically ready to throw onto the wall. So let's do it. Alright, so this is how the assembly will look. I still gotta tighten down these threaded connections, but obviously, as I just explained, do it like that. And if you need help, probably consult an actual tradesman video and not mine, because obviously there's been people who do this for years and Okay, I got the assembly installed. It's definitely easier to work in a workspace than it is to work while it's mounted. So in any place where you can mount things before installing it, you should try to prioritize that. But I did add these two additional lengths that go straight down through this little shelf area. Those will go down to a T that branches from our water tank going towards the right, this way towards the galley, and then that way and up towards our shower. This doesn't look as satisfying as some other videos with their perfectly perpendicular and parallel lines. However, I didn't want to use additional fittings just for the fact of reliability. When you add additional fittings, it adds more points of failure. So I figured since we're nowhere near the bend radius of the half inch pecs, which I believe is around five inches. I figured we'd just go that route and try to use as few fittings as possible. We might even save a couple cents. So we went that route. 
So I think our next steps are to get the flanges of our shower and our mixer siliconed up, that way water can't go behind them. And then after that, we should be able to give it a test run. We could at least make sure that none of this leaks before we close off this area and make it way harder to troubleshoot. The boss is here and I've got our system pressurized. So yeah, you wanna to try to turn on the shower? Ready? Yeah. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, I forgot it's on. The oh. thing's paused up top. Oh. <laughs> so I'm paused. Turn, that was turn so off the thing. And I know. Um. Three, two, one. Whoa! And we're that's gonna a lot of pressure. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. Let's test out our stopper. Whoa! Crazy. So the pump only turns on when the system needs to be pressurized or loses pressure. So for example, when Liana opened the valve, the pump started going. And look, the shower is technically still on. But I just gotta unstop it and go, psh. Mm. You ready? Whoa. And yeah. Works well, so that's how we're gonna save water when we shower. Yeah. Turn it on. You know, get a little wet. Yeah, and that pause button's nice because then you're not at risk of like changing the temperature on accident, mm -hmm. right? So your your temperature is controlled down here, and then your pause and unpause button is just on the shower head itself. Yeah. Pretty nifty. But yeah, the flow looks good. It. It's only 1.8 gallons per min uh, per minute, but it looks like plenty for our purposes. Oh, that look, it looks crazy. It looks like more <laughs> more than out. our current shower. Yeah, I think so. But, alright, sweet. Nice. We're gonna wrap up this video here. We're really excited about our shower. There's a few remaining things, like trim at the top. Um, our Nautilus shower door is coming a little bit later this month, so we'll get that in there and then kind of put a front framing on it. So, a few more things left, but thanks for watching, and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up comment if you have any thoughts, questions, suggestions, and subscribe if you want to follow along or if you just want to see more Bailey. Yo Bailey. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. See ya.